Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Kellen here from Star Systems, and welcome to another edition of Track Walk in MX Simulator, where today we are playing the Block Pound. Is that correct, Chris? Yes, it is the 2017 Block Pound. Right on, and we are joined by the one, the only, Chris Riesenberg, aka Checkers448, and he's taking us around a little bit on this track today. He's going to show us. Uh, this beautiful track that he's been building, he's been live streaming, building it a little bit, and uh, this uh, next Thursday, the 11th of May, there's actually going to be a fun little race called King of the Block Pound that we will be uh, streaming live on SYS TV. You can click our Twitch link in the description below to find more information about that. But why don't you tell us a little bit more about this event, Chris? Yeah, it's something that, um, as you know, Kung, because I know you've been around, I've been wanting to do something similar for a long time, which is basically have a compound, bunch of different tracks, run a moto on all of them, and find out who is the king of the compound, or in this case, the block pound, and never really made it happen. And finally, with the help of Wheels, doing some stuff on the site to make it happen, having the track ready and done for it, um, it's called the Block Pound for Eli Block. It's actually his compound, who is a uh, up-and-coming amateur in sim. Who I met his uh, his dad's actually my race tech center up in the up in the northeast. So that's how I met Mr. Eli, playing a little bit of sim, and he wanted a compound, and so we put something together, something pretty cool and fun, and we'll go do some racing on it. So there's an outdoor track, which is what we're playing right now, and then there's a hillside SX, which is I guess kind of a hybrid track, but it's more of a normal supercross just with elevation and then a traditional stadium style sx and a straight rhythm so it should be a pretty cool format there'll be a pro and amateur class and hopefully it should be a lot of fun yeah i think it i mean it sounds awesome i remember like you're talking a little bit there at the beginning about the uh king of the compound idea that you were going to do with tagger designs back in the day that was on the rf compound but i mean First and foremost, when it comes to building a track like this, since the nature of a track walk is we're talking about the track, obviously, I mean, where do you even, like, kind of begin to start if if you want to build a, a compound? Like, is there a specific track that you always start with? Or, I mean, do you just lay the environment and then build stuff onto it? I mean, what's kind of the mindset there? Um, it really depends on what crazy ideas in my head, which in this situation, on this one, um, I knew that I really wanted to build a hillside SX track. It's something that um, I just think is cool. It's basically if you gave me a piece of land and a dozer and unlimited funds and unlimited dirt and ability to move everything around wherever I want to, that's what I would do is build <laughs> something like that just because it's a little bit crazy. It's a little bit different. It breaks it out of the normal mold of normal Supercross. It allows you to build some kind of different obstacles and get a little crazier with stuff. So that's on this one where it started with and um as you actually pointed out when we when you first loaded the track up before we started recording is you noticed it was actually built off checkersville which not by accident i had kind of like the perfect hillside already built and room for a supercross down in the bottom so i was like all right that's cool i'll build two supercrosses and it was actually just going to be those two tracks and then that's when i started talking to eli and he was interested in a compound but he wanted the super crosses and actually a corner track yeah which a corner track would be cool and all but i was like man if i'm gonna do it let's just build an actual national as well i have room to do it and so i kind of had the super crosses laid in where i wanted them and then built the national within the environment kind of where there was extra room and the straight rhythm idea just Again, I was actually already thinking about the event possibilities with that part of it. Right. So I was like, all right, well, let's put a straight rhythm in here. That'd be super, super cool to basically have everything come down to potentially the last short straight rhythm race for the king of the block pound. Like, that seems cool to me. Like, a lot of pressure on the line. Don't make a mistake because it's going to be close. Like, straight rhythm's always close racing. Right, right. So I figured it'd be super exciting. Yeah, that's... I mean, it's definitely a unique concept idea. I don't think we've ever had like a who can win on the most tracks in one night kind of thing. It's always like a uh, this is the track you're racing tonight. This is how it's going to go. It's it's like a full gamut of different things that we'll be throwing at the riders. Really, uh, probably a fair chunk of the best riders in the game uh, going to show up and race this thing. So exciting stuff for sure. Um, 
Well, as we're on the national yeah. track here, I mean, you can you can keep talking about some other stuff, but I just want to ask your opinion on like what what section did you build on this track that you would say is like the one that you were looking forward to building the most, or you have liked how it turned out the best, or something along those lines. Um, honestly, that we just went through it uh, right before that turning rhythm. There's that big scrub roller, and you can get so sideways off that thing. Yeah. Like practically drag a bar on it every <laughs> lap. So. Um, I really like that and then the turning rhythm that follows it I think is really cool although I struggle with it because of lack of talent <laughs> um, I do think it the way that it turned out is, is pretty neat um, obviously I really dig the flow as a whole with the whole track and then the kind of the mix of like the rougher sandy stuff and then the smoother kind of more local cross style like I guess that's what I would call it right when I build my local cross stuff it's a little jumpy and whatnot like I like all of that but if you had to ask me my favorite part it would be hands down that scrub roller for sure sweet all right well I mean this track I'm already really enjoying the flow and uh, fair warning to any viewers out there that are watching I have just now started playing this track I've never played it before so I might look a little bit weird playing this track um, but which one do you want to try next like which what are these tracks are we trying to do in order are we gonna go in order the way that you want the event to be ran on? yeah we'll just do it in the, okay. the order of the event um, so we'll start off with we're gonna take 40 riders into the national and uh, based on qualifying times for both pro and amateur classes and then from there we'll take the top uh, 18 guys straight to the Supercross main and we'll actually run an LCQ here on the first SX track um, let's see here I'm setting the track is this gonna be the hillside or the actual this is the hillside SX track Oh man um, so the LCQ will actually be run on this track as well for the guys that don't get so the guys that finish 19th through 40th We'll still get a race this track in an LCQ format before we go into the Supercross main events, taking 22 to each of the Supercross main events. Oh, man, that's so much information already to process. This is going to be like the ultimate math crunching race ever. Like, we'll just be doing math on the fly. I need to get someone to do a stat sheet, most likely, for this race. Um, actually, it'll be a lot easier and better than it was. Remember when we did the team championship? It didn't really work out like all that awesome because I was crunching numbers half the night. Wheels has actually programmed the site to be able to get us live updated points standings during the event. Oh, okay, so cool. From each moto calculating points. So we'll actually know who's leading and all that stuff with it once the results are uploaded, which is super easy to do and quick to do. Yeah. So that'll make things super, super nice. All right. So tell me about this track as we're playing along with it. Like what... <laughs> what kind of features were you trying to go for in this one? Because you said you wanted to build this track like more specifically for the compound, right? Yeah, for sure. So um, a few things that you'll notice right away. The big uphill triple, like Laraco's leap style almost, was kind of a must. Um, and then once you go over that, you're going to kind of hit a wall jump, go down the hill, and then you're going to come into like this split section, which was kind of the other, I guess I would say key section that I wanted to make sure to put in was a split. Dude, that rhythm section is like straight out of MX2002, man. Like, featuring Ricky Carmichael days. And I just died right before like the best whip jump in the game. <laughs> That's a shame. I swear though, that rhythm section, do you remember uh, the Las Vegas or like US Open track in that game? Yep. That, I that, do remember it. That's what that uh, reminds me of when you come back in the stadium. I can't say that that was intentional, but <laughs> totally cool. So again, this track though was like a hundred percent my kind of dream. If you just gave me a, a billion dollars, a dozer and any piece of land <laughs> I wanted in the world, like lots of split sections, different rhythms. And yeah, I mean, obviously the jumps are a little bit like up on the hillside, that triple and that big double are pretty big to throw big whips on and that side of things. So. Um, we do kind of pop out of the trees here for a second, but that was that was the, really the goal and the focus of it. And then obviously just create a lot of rhythm. So if you go through any of the rhythm sections, there's at least two, if not three lines through all of them. Yeah, I've definitely been able to get that kind of feel for these rhythm sections so far. What I like about it is how much of the track is on the hill. Like sometimes with hillside supercross tracks, if that's what you want to call them, like only part of the track goes like either down an embankment or up the side of a hill or something like that but like this whole track is built onto kind of like it almost looks like it's on like the side of a quarry where it's like got different levels if that makes sense yeah for sure and that was actually on purpose one of the challenges of building a hillside track is building uphill is pretty cool in supercross and works pretty well 
or any track for that matter, but building downhill, it's really difficult to kind of build good jumps and control your speed and get a good feel. So instead of going up and down the hill, we have to go across the hill and kind of on the side. But what it allowed me to do is obviously create different levels, but also kind of dig down and still get some of the up and down elevation where I wanted it. Right. Uh, because you're digging into the hillside. But without having to be constantly, basically, other, otherwise, every other straightaway would be like a downhill triple or a drop-off type situation, and it'd be just kind of a waste. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, this is really cool, though. I like this concept for sure. Like I said, I've, I don't know if I've ever seen one where it's all on the hillside and not necessarily all on a flat with a little hill. Yeah, for sure, and um, that kind of goes back to the last time and only other time I've done this was on the Race Factory compound that originally was going to be the King of Compound event, actually. And that one went up and down a little bit, but even that one struggled from, again, going downhill a lot. Yeah. And that says one thing I learned, and yeah, I think this one works pretty well. And it just uh, it's different obstacles than you normally build it's just cool like that turning rhythm isn't something you normally see or this section like the whoops into the rollers yeah rollers and then like a kind of a scrub single and this this triple is no slouch it's honestly kind of hard to get the timing right on that little single to get a good drive for that thing yeah, on 250, you can jump it. Even I can jump it, and I'm not that great at the game, but it's a huck. Like, a 450, you can do oppo whips for days. Oh, but on the sweet. 250F, you can, uh, you have to hit it pretty dang hard. So, and also, um, I spend a lot of time on this track and all the tracks on this compound, and I usually do it with most of my stuff, to actually balance this split section out where you can go inside or outside, and it works out even. Okay. So it's just how you execute the section. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's always been kind of a characteristic of you, to be fair, is trying to find a way to make a section even. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it takes a little bit of extra time because you have, or actually a lot of extra time, because you have to play around with steepening and ramping out jumps a lot of times or making a rut or berm a little bit better or worse. But it is something that I spend a lot of time on because I don't like one line tracks. I like the. Like when we're live streaming, nothing's cooler to me than seeing two guys go into a section and run completely different rhythms, but be battling like nose to tail with each other. It's just, it's cool to me. That's what I look for in tracks. Yeah. And it, it t honestly, it's kind of rare these days. Um, the only thing that is not so rare about it anymore is that with this limited qualifying format that we've had for Supercross this year, it seems like guys aren't able to figure out the like one golden line around the track, you know? So it has made it a little bit more well, somebody's doing this line and it works, you know what I mean? For sure, or guys can at least find the consistent line that works for them that maybe is not quite as fast, but they they don't have as much time to dial in that more technical line for sure. Right. All right, let's finish up a lap on this one and then I'm keen to play that, that regular Supercross track. We've kind of been working our way down from, this, is, this almost feels like a motocross hybrid track at this point, honestly. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. And then, um, you know, one thing I tried to go through with the environment here is to give that feeling of being, like, actually up in the trees. Uh-huh. Um, obviously, partially with the decals, with the trees around it, but the only way to really sell that is you also have to have that open area, which was part of the reason for, like, the wash section down in the bottom that's out of the trees and different decals and, and that side of things. So. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'll let it's... you finish out your lap, and I'll go ahead and get ready to set the next track. Heck yeah. Gosh, this is, this is pretty cool so far. Ooh, I'm kind of excited to see the next one. This is a whole different, like, feeling, too, because every video I think I've ever done with you, like, I played the track a bunch and got kind of used to it beforehand. Playing it, having never really even seen it, is a whole different, like, feeling, because then you get to tell me, like, what you were going through, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even think of that, you know, in a section or something. Yeah, for sure. So this next track that we're playing is the Stadium SX track, and this one was based... Uh, loosely, actually my goal for this terrain before I brought it into the compound was to release before Supercross this year to give people kind of a feel of the scale and style that we were going to go for. And so it was kind of a modified version of actually the Toronto track. Um, yeah, I can you see won't that notice much resemblance left um, at this <laughs> point because I tweaked on it so much. But that was the initial goal of it. And it's actually been rescaled and shaped and changed considerably. But that was the initial setup of, of this one and where it started at. 
Well, at and, least that first turn complex, I can definitely see, like, you must have started there and then started yeah. reworking the other parts of the track. For sure. In the initial version, I literally just started kind of jumbling up sections into different orders and stuff and um, adding and changing jumps in the rhythm so that they rode a little bit different. But yeah, I mean, it, obviously it completely changed as the track went on, which is, that's the way I prefer to build. That's why I don't like replicas as much, is you're constrained to, well, you have to make this work because that's what's on the blueprint. Yeah. Whereas with a custom track, I can say, ah, oh, this would be cool if we added an extra jump here. Or if I move this corner over here, this would ride better out of a 90 degree corner than a 180, stuff like that. Right, right. You can just do on a custom track, whereas with a replica, you don't get that freedom. Now, another question I had for you about building tracks is that I know you've kind of done the live stream thing for a couple of years now, or at least you have been for like about a year. Um, have you enjoyed like the process of having people there to give you feedback immediately? Or are you the type of person that you have like a set way you want to do it and, and what they're saying doesn't really change your opinion of something? Um, it's honestly really cool because it just, instead of going and sitting by myself just pounding out building tracks and whatnot it keeps it a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more fun and then there are times where i'll get into a situation where i will be like struggling for an idea and someone in chat will say oh this would actually be really cool and it's something i didn't think about of a way to do it right it doesn't happen a lot of times because i always have that feel that i'm going for Right. And it might not match up with it, but there's definitely a lot of times where it does work and it does help. But more than anything, it's just fun to actually hang out while I'm doing it. And more so the motivation of that is I've heard a lot of people say they've been learning from the live streams. And I feel like this community needs more track creators. Yeah. So if they can learn by just me live streaming, which I enjoy, then it's I'm all for it. Yeah, that's pretty cool for sure. And it definitely, I've seen... Uh, some people posting tracks lately that say, um, you know, thanks to you for helping out with something, something, or I've even had some people post tracks where they thank me for like my live streams and stuff that I've done with building tracks. So you're definitely right. Like it helps the community a lot when we have people that are willing to take a lot of time out of their day or schedule or whatever to start working on tracks themselves and figure it out. Cause I was honestly thinking about this recently like think of some of the guys that that you are building tracks with on the rf crew now like they they kind of started out as like just kind of randy community members almost you know like not to degrade them and say like oh they're not they're not you or anything like that but you know they weren't really well known but then they like worked on it and and got better at building tracks and then you guys are like, I like what you guys are doing. Why don't you guys try to help us out a little bit? And now they're part of the RF track building crew, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And it helps grow all of us as creators because then you have other people giving you feedback. And, you know, you get to see a lot of it with Supercross where we'll put the track up and, up, you know, you get a bunch of creators that are playing it and they're going to go through it and they're going to say, well, this is what I would do or and why and how. Right, right. You know, and... It takes a lot of time if you think to sit down and like make a tutorial for someone. That takes a lot of time. Whereas in a live stream scenario, what's really cool is if somebody doesn't know how to do something and they pop into my live stream chat, or even if they sometimes they send me a PM, which please don't, honestly. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I'm not mad at anyone that has just my PM box is always full. Yeah. Um, so the best thing is honestly jump in during a live stream and tell me what you want to learn. And a lot of times I, I'll build it off to the side of the track I'm working on or it's something I would have to do anyways on a section of the track, and I'll just show you how to do it live. Mm -hmm. And then there's no better way to see how to do it than you don't have to read a tutorial. I can actually show you, and if you're confused, you can just ask a question live. It, it works out pretty well. I do that quite a bit, and it's honestly fun for me live streaming. Or something else new that I've been doing is with guys is they'll send me a beta, and I'll actually just beta it on the live stream and say, hey, this is what I'm seeing and what I'm thinking, and this is what I would oh, do wow. differently, etc. So huh. that's been pretty fun. Yeah, that's pretty cool because, I mean, for an amateur track builder, <laughs> the best feedback you can get is from someone who really knows what they're doing in the game. Not to, like, build you up as the god of all gods, but, I mean, you are pretty much one of the most, you know, well-known track creators in the community, and so I'm sure that really helps those guys out a ton. That's pretty cool of you. I didn't know you were doing that. 
yeah, it's pretty fun, and um, I encourage anyone to always stop by and hang out as much as as much as you want to. I'm not saying I'm the best live streamer. I don't take it ridiculously seriously. I honestly just I'm gonna be hanging out building a track anyway, so yeah. why not live stream and people come by, they learn a little bit, we BS bench race and yeah, well, we'll definitely leave your your live stream uh, info in the description below. So anybody watching being like, oh, I want to go watch one, check it out. Click that follow button. Notification actually, squad. I actually prefer this, you not playing the track ahead of time at all, because I can at least keep up with you. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> uh, favorite part of this track is definitely the long rhythm after the first whoop section, because there's three legit lines that are all the same speed down it if you don't screw them up, which yeah. I've screwed it up, I think, every lap. I've been trying to but. get down to this inside line and going... I just about got it right there where I was going over table quad, but yep. I haven't got it yet. But I can see, yeah, again, multiple rhythm lanes, and gosh, it's going to be really interesting to see how these tracks get played. I'm always For amazed. Sure. I'm sure you, I mean, like you saying that uh, you're amazed, or you, you like that you can actually keep up with me, but I mean, this this is the only time in a program right when the track comes out that I can run lap times comparable to any of the alien speed type people in the game. So I wish I yeah, could do what they nuts. do sometimes. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously I have hundreds of laps on this from the time I've spent building it, and uh, those guys will jump on in three laps in and already be beating my times. And the one thing that's unfortunate is with the um, event format, the way that it is, Either you do limited qualifying, and make sure you set gate one, by the way. Oh, yeah, sorry. Let me do that. With the qualifying format, either you do limited qualifying, which is cool, and it gives guys less time on the track, but at the same point, they use the track for a night, and a lot of times guys don't really go back to the track and really play it. So you spend all these hours as a creator building a track for one night. Yeah. Or you do what we're doing for this event, where the track comes out a week ahead of time, and that's cool. Guys play the track for a week because they're qualifying and enjoying playing it and whatnot. But then they get it so dialed and like there will just be superhuman like quad lines that they'll be consistently jumping for the race and stuff. So yeah. it's kind of a double edged sword. Um so bad on this track. <laughs> This is a short straight rhythm, obviously limited on space because we didn't have this just massive terrain tile to work with, um, but still tried to put in like some challenging stuff, some various lines, and purposely kind of a really tricky, unique section right before the finish to allow oh, guys whoa, to make last whoa. ditch passes and effort. Two mounds of whoops. Hmm. Interesting. Obviously kind of, or not obviously, but it's fueled by the back-to-back -back dragons back, um, sections that they've been doing a lot in Supercross. Yeah. And yeah. that was actually one of Eli's requests was to have a few sections on each of the tracks that would help him prepare for actual racing and the back to back dragon backs were common, so that's where those came from. If you follow there's just a little path to go yeah. back. We can actually you... just rip down this instead of restarting okay, every time. Okay, cool, cool. I was gonna ask if you wanted to do that or not. I'll let you get down it at least once or twice, um, and then we can restart and do like a head-to-head. -head. Right. There's also, after the wall jump, you can do a 3-3, three, three, but it's pretty challenging. And it's one of those things, like, if you go for it and don't make it, you risk blowing the race, but to go fast, that you have to do it. So, um, that'll be technical on the 450s for sure. On the 250, I don't think you would be able to do it in a race situation. It's because it's gnarly hard on a 450, but... Oh uh, my gosh, that's a huge line. Oh man. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, keep going. I was just I was reveling in my own talent for a second. Uh, I wish I had some. You want to give me some of that talent? <laughs> I just like I'm sure you've done it already, but I like three to the top of the dragon's back, and then jump down to the second to the top notch of the second one, and then pretty much jumped out. Oh really? I don't know if I actually have. It's just going for it big time. And and now you've got me all like interested to try doing this triple triple line here. Yeah, I didn't get it. You have to hit the dragon or the wall just right to be able to get it. Yeah, I didn't even get the double triple. And you yeah, have so the to the dragon's back you have like the decision. Do you do it conservative or do you freaking just bonsai the thing and try to make up time on a guy? <laughs> which will make it really interesting for the race. And so we were talking about a little bit of the race format. So the 22 guys 
we'll get into the Supercrosses. They'll run both main events, and then after that, your score from the National, both Supercrosses will be combined. And then the Pros, we're going to take 16 to a straight rhythm bracket, and the Amateurs will take 8. And then your fourth Muda score will actually come from the straight rhythm. So that should be pretty cool. And with this straight rhythm being pretty short, anything can happen for sure. And you could get knocked out. Even the top guy, I would think, could get knocked out round one. Yeah. Oh, I just went over the bars. This is pretty cool, man. All these tracks are ridiculous. Like, if I, I feel like if people even got one of them, they'd be pretty stoked. And you got four of them coming out at one time. And we're going to be racing it, like, the next week. I feel like sometimes... For free. Yeah, <laughs> for free. I feel like sometimes these tracks come out and it's like, oh, well, it's a nice thought, but, like, nobody's doing a race on it. And then somebody does, like, a fun race on it later, you know? But... No, it's like we get to do this cool compound race. Ah, oh, throwback, man. You got me thinking about that king of the compound back in the day that you guys were going to do. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely going to be an exciting night. I hope a lot of guys come by the live stream and, and hang out. I'm excited to have you back streaming for an event. Woo! That'll be fun. It's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. <laughs> And it'll be a cool off-season event, kind of that transition from outdoors to supercross. We get a little bit of both which should be pretty cool and then you know straight rhythm's always fun and the format's kind of it's kind of a mix between monster cup straight rhythm but monster cup i kind of on crack did you just nail that one? oh nope. i almost did so Man. as you can tell it's fast but yeah. it is it is challenging so all right let's finish this up and then we will call it a video my friend I'm not even going to get to the finish line. You're going to beat me. You're doing the safety dance all the way. I didn't even know line. you had crashed. If you didn't say anything, I probably would have tried to bonsai and crash. <laughs> but now that I won, anyway, we definitely should end this. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to go out on a victory like that? Yeah. Like so look for the track release. Even if you're not able to make the event, definitely play it. Enjoy it. Have some fun. Um, we're getting close. This might be actually put me over 150 tracks when i released this thing holy crap have you still been updating that thread i haven't oh yeah oh, oh yeah the yep i keeping tracking honestly it's partially just for me to remember all the tracks that i built so if i ever want to go back and play something i go back look at my thread and say oh yeah i remember that track i forgot all about it right yeah well what i'm talking about anybody that doesn't know uh checkers has a uh thread on the tracks part of the forum the mx simulator forum that is all of his tracks that he's ever released in this game, which is, as he mentioned, quite a bit up there in the numbers department. So we'll be sure to link that. We'll be sure to link this track when it comes out. Um, you were thinking maybe, you know, the night this video is released? Yeah, that's the. Okay. that sounds like the plan. It's finished. I mean, we're playing the finished version now, so we just got to push the button basically to say here you guys go and as soon as it's released qualifying will be open signups are already open at racefactorygaming.com no membership required and so just come hang out if you have the game come join us for some fun racing and see if you can get into that top 40 race the national and and hopefully even get in the top 22 to do the super crosses as well heck yeah man all right well thanks for letting us play your track thanks for having me Absolutely. All right, guys, we will catch you guys in the next video.